do it. Fratelloni Hardware and Garden Stores brings you Garage Logic Podcast number 1366, August 19th, 2024. 97 degrees on this day in 1976. And 39 was the low on this day in 1967. Hail the flashlight, King. Hail you! And now, from the mayor's office above the boathouse on the east shore of Spoon Lake, it's Garage Logic with Chris Reavers, Manning Technology Corner. Hi. Kenny Olson from the Krabby Coffee Shop. John Hyde in the newsroom. And of course, the rookie. Here is your flashlight, King. Fireworks Commissioner and the Keeper of Common Sense, your Mayor, Joe Sushir. Day 29. Without the woman who survived the coup against Biden uh, holding a press conference or taking any serious questions, maybe that'll change this week. Wait a minute. Is that an official stance in Garage Logic? What do you mean? <coughs> the coup? <coughs> Well, it was a coup. Yeah. But that's, isn't that the first time this has been public well, on I the show? I think it's common knowledge, don't you? I, I think they took the old boy into a back room and pretty much said, you're, give Put us the, the spotlight keys. on him yeah. and said, hey, you, here's you, the deal. You can't do it. We're going to go with Kamala and uh, Wolsey. And that, that could change this week in Chicago. She, she'll have to give a speech. On what? Well, I'm sure it'll be thank you for the nomination, and uh, that's probably about it. I'm here to uh, be your next president, and and I have I have much to discuss about that, Matt. But first, some car news. GL. <laughs> wow. Okay, okay, that took a weird turn. Right. No, okay. some GL internal combustion news. Oh, that's good. Uh, Dan Oz writes. Just an FYI that my 1943 Jeep and I will be in the State Fair Parade on Friday, this Friday. Uh, and then Thursday the 29th and Friday the 30th. It will also be on static display all day on Tuesday the 27th as part of the State Fair Veterans Appreciation Day. Hmm. For parades, the military vehicles are usually right in the front behind the color guard. My Jeep is set up as an homage to my dad, whom you have designated a great living American. We did so posthumously. Uh, his unit information is on the bumper. 17th Airborne Division, 193 DGIR Glider Infantry Regiment. He's jumping out of planes. And in, no, he was in a glider. Oh. Uh, and instead of a serial number on the hood and white numbers, I put uh, his date of birth, 0604-1921. I will attach a photo of the Jeep from the recent Corn Days Parade in Long Lake. Well, thank you, Dan. And he also uh, was touting a Central Wisconsin military show. Uh, but that's, what's today? 19th. Monday. 19th. That's today and tomorrow. It'll be tough to get over there. It's in uh, Anawa, Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. And he said, besides the many military vehicles, if you're a GL or uh, near Anawa, Wisconsin, today and tomorrow is this uh, military show. The museum has over 500 rare and exotic automobiles, mostly British. Hmm. Cool. Oh, I'd love to get there. I, Matt, look up where Anawa is. A N I W A. Anawa. Is it a long ways? And then from uh, Tim Wait Johns. Don't yes, move on Kenny. Yes. Sidebar Grand Forks. There's a museum, an air museum in Grand Forks that has, I believe, the only surviving glider in the country. Weren't which, they made out of balsa wood? Which were made at the airport uh, right there in uh, Minneapolis. I'll be damned. My, huh. my grandpa built gliders there. Wow. Yeah, really cool. Anyway. And, and Tim John has an idea for a GL club, a GL uh, street rod association. And it looks, I'm sorry to interrupt, but it uh, looks to be east of Wausau. East of Wausau. That'd be a hall. North of Stevens Point. So you're almost to the other side of the... Uh, I know where Stevens Point is. Okay. What famous Pittsburgh Steeler came from Stevens Point? Franco Harris. No. Uh, oh. 
wait. Oh, Jack yeah. Lamb. My uncle, when he was a Christian brother, taught him. Hmm. Terry Bradshaw. No. Dan Joe Green? Rocky Blair. Oh. No. Oh. Have you seen the 30 for 30 on Rocky Blair? I have not. Did he do time? No. I don't no. think so. No, he suffered from mental stuff. Well, you right? got hit in the head many he times. Go ahead, May John. I get back to what I was talking yeah, about? Yeah, Rocky Blair, talk about Steeler The GL Street Route Association, and he sent a picture of it. Uh, it didn't print, but I recall the picture. It looks like to be about, maybe about a 56 Ford pickup truck. I hope I'm not wrong. With uh, a license plate that says GL Street Rod Association. Wouldn't that be a Neat. fun yeah. group to yeah. have in, uh, in GL? Yes, sure it would. Thank you. Uh, can I, I'm going to clear something up. Uh, I, I can't uh, get away from walls being in the news. I'd like to. I think I owe it to myself. <laughs> But I'm having a hard time, and I've got a number of Walls items. But I have personally confronted a very—I think I might have told you the story. I went up to a guy who's a very uh, committed leftist, a very connected leftist uh, in the in the region. And I said, <laughs> will you at least tell me that Walls is financially irresponsible? Would you at least acknowledge that? And he got angry and said, the judge told him to pay those food fraudsters. Okay. The the left has been getting away with that. They've been getting away with the idea that one reason the food fraud continued is because a judge instructed the Department of Education to keep paying them. That is what we call a lie. That's a lie. <laughs> uh, Ramsey County District Court Judge John Guthman, who I know, in 2022 admonished Walls for making inaccurate and false statements in claiming he, Guthman, forced the governor to continue making payments to the scandal read, uh, scandal-ridden Feeding Our Future nonprofit, which is at the center, which was at the center of the scheme to steal a quarter of a billion dollars. Right. Now, I happen to think this is important. It's important for when you're talking to your uh, friends on the other side of the aisle. You might want this information. The judge never did any such thing. Uh, in September of 2022, the Justice Department charged 47 Somali immigrants with stealing 250 million bucks. Only 50 million has been recovered as of June. The scheme involved the 47 defendants whom prosecutors say created an umbrella group called Feeding Our Future and then created numerous subgroups that were advertised as bringing food to needy children during the pandemic, all of which we now know is, is nonsense. They did not do such a thing. The accused allegedly used the fraudulent groups to file for relief funding at mosques across Minnesota. Once they obtained the funding, they reported feeding thousands of kids every day and supplied rosters of non-existent children to the government. Huh. And they've been nabbed now. They've been caught at this. One such fraudulent feeding center was so brazen that it just copied all the names from a website called List of Names. Jeez. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> and and uh, and sent that list to the feds to claim that it fed people on the list. An audit by a nonpartisan watchdog found that Walls's Department of Education failed to conduct proper oversight. Well, the state auditor found that Walls has claimed he was forced to continue making payments to Feeding Our Future, which Guthman strongly slapped down okay. in a statement. In a 2022 statement, Guthman approved a release stating that Walls's claim is false. In other words, the, the judge had his integrity challenged by this phony Walls. On Feb 26, 2022, the Star Tribune reported on a federal investigation of Feeding Our Future. The article included the following false statement. In April of 2021, Ramsey County District Judge John Guthman told the department it did not have the authority to stop payments and ordered the department to resume payments. Since Feb, 
February, the Star Tribune, quote, has been reported or paraphrased on many occasions by many other media outlets. The same media source reported that in her April 4, 2022 testimony to the Minnesota Senate, the Commissioner of Education stated that the Minnesota Department of Education tried to stop payments to Feeding Our Future only to be ordered by Judge Guthman to resume payments. That is false. Then when federal indictments were announced last week, many news reports were published. On September 22, 2022, Governor Walls told the media that the Department of Education attempted to end payments to Feeding Our Future because of possible fraud, but that Judge Guthman ordered payments to continue. That is false. The judge's statement said that it was Walls' Department of Education that resumed payments, claiming that the nonprofit's serious deficiencies were resolved as of June 2021. North Star State Republican legislative leaders blamed Walls for the failure. This is stunning. The Department of Education and Governor Walls have repeatedly tried to tell the public that they did all they could. But this report clearly demonstrates that was a false narrative, Minnesota Senate Minority Leader Mark Johnson said. All right. They could have, uh, Senator Patty Anderson, who served as state auditor from 03 to 07, said they could have stopped this long before there were $250 million in claims sent out to people. All this could have been avoided. So the judge did not say resume paying them. He said, you have no legal grounds. Well, now I'm now I'm going to get confused myself. Uh in April 21, R- Ramsey County Guthman told the department it didn't have the authority to stop payments and ordered the department to resume payments. That is false. He did not say that. Okay. Let the record show. But they've been getting away with that. They've been, well, they've been getting away with a lot of falsehoods. Now, can and they, they don't get, get challenged by the, you know, media. Back to walls in China. I, I thought we were goofing around when we put on our tinfoil hats. <laughs> I, but oh. now, now we have a story that has to be read carefully. It's in the it's in Alpha News. A former student who accompanied Walls on a trip to China called Walls Maoist to the core. Uh, but it's one of those deals, you know, where we don't get the full name of the student. I'm not, I'm not indicting Alpha, but I'm just suggesting that everything you need here to run with is not here. Uh, we know that what this story does is reinforce the idea that we came, that we realize that Walls has a very significant fondness for China. Mm -hmm. Uh, And this this student uh, said that he accompanied Walls on, they would go out to souvenir stands and Walls would only buy the little red book, you know, Maoist little red book and gave it to people as a gift. And then Walls founded a company that took students on trips to China. Uh, We know that to be true. Uh, the New York Post recently reported that Walls was a visiting fellow at a state-run university in China as recently as 07. Now a former student who says he joined Walls on a 1995 trip to China is speaking to Alpha News about the experience. That student, Shad, asked that we not use his last name. Well, that that... That weakens Shad's argument, as far as I'm concerned. Okay. All right. And Shad goes on to tell us uh, many things that maybe we already knew, that Walls was a true believer. This Shad fellow says, I've been trying to tell people this for 30 years. Nobody wanted to listen. And then I, I won't continue because what we get from this is, I'm sorry, it's speculation. I don't doubt that Walls has this extraordinary fondness for China, uh, but I can't I can't really conclude anything beyond that uh, from reading this story. It's it's interesting, 
and again, I I don't doubt the the, the student, but uh, and we do know that that Walls uh, has been looked at by Congress for this. Congressman Jim Banks of Indiana recently wrote to the U.S. Department of Defense to uh, wonder if Walls had a security clearance during his visits to China, saying Walls possessed a concerning affinity for China. Banks told the DOD, any individual traveling dozens of times to an adversary nation in a personal capacity while having access to classified information poses an obvious security risk. On Friday, House Oversight Committee Chairman James Comer said he was launching an investigation into Walls' longstanding connections to the Chinese Communist Party, entities, and officials. Shad, this student who will not name himself, said he submitted a report with Comer's office on Saturday. Uh, John R. Schindler, a former senior intelligence analyst and counterintelligence officer with the National Security Agency, wrote of Walls' ties to China, saying it's certain that Walls was vetted by the Ministry of State Security, the regime's secret police, because that's how China works. No American would be allowed to run academic exchanges for a couple of decades on the CCP's dime without the minister... The, without the National Security Agency involved, China's uh, Ministry of State Security. Uh, three decades ago, a young American with an affection for China who was also a part-time member of the U.S. military would have been a tempting recruiting target for Chinese intelligence, added Schindler. Uh, more generally, U.S. Senator Tom Cotton of Arkansas said Walls owes the American people an explanation about his unusual 35-year relationship with communist China. Walls, the Walls st uh, staff has not responded for comment. Well, so it's up to uh, in this country uh, people uh, will not care. Uh, he is being treated like a celebrity and a star he's done everything except a cartwheel when he comes onto the stage <laughs> for kamala i keep expecting a cartwheel uh and i i just i uh, have to let go uh, i have to give up no not give up i have to let go but uh, because it is quite clear that absolutely no one is interested in his failures as governor. No one is interested. Um, no one in the in the mainstream. No media. one who counts is interested. Okay. It was. It's been financial failure after failure after failure. Well, nobody's going to say any or say or do anything to harm the ticket. I mean, we should we should be used to this. Um, how come nobody who, these people that are perpetrating this story, and Alpha, I'll just talk to you, why don't you get a hold of the FBI's Foreign Counterintelligence Division and talk to them? Obviously, this has to be on their radar, the CIA radar, the NSA, one of those alphabet soup organizations. Talk talk to some people in charge, find out what they know. Well, if they if they know something nefarious, I, I have to trust that we would know that. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. <clears throat> but is there going to be... Before it's too late. We've had this 29 days, a honeymoon period? Is that what it's it was? It's day 29. Okay, day 29. But there has to be a Armageddon day where, okay, you you have to come through with some stuff and not just at the DNC say... I, I, got, it. I got it. I'm trying to lift people up. <laughs> yeah. But happen. everybody in this state is treating this like, um, well, he's from Minnesota. He's one of ours. Isn't this special? And they're not going to bring up any of these dark subjects. They're not going to bring up the COVID um, ridiculous um, restrictions but, he put in place. But now, not gonna... but now that you look back at his terms as governor, it was all dark. Well, we know that. But what I'm saying is nobody other than us, Alpha, few other people, are going to bring up those meatheads on that conservative radio station. What are they, 1130, whatever? Mm -hmm. Those guys, I'm sure, are talking about it, right? Oh, yeah, sure. Mitch but Berg is talking Trump, about it. Isn't the Trump campaign, uh, there's some people smart enough on that campaign to bring up the skeletons that Walls has in his well, closet. That's What an excellent question, Matthew, because now the Trump campaign seems intent on tweeting, I 
in, in artificial intelligence stuff. I, I mean, they're just off the rails I, I over there at the Trump campaign. <laughs> the whole Republican Party is off the rails. Yeah, they're just ridiculous. They, they've they're blown it. Caricatures. They, they bet on this guy, and they bet wrong. It's just a wrong. It's a bad bet. They, well, they blew it. They blew it. You either vote for him or you vote for communism. You, you make your choice. Counterclockwise expansion. That's what's going on. That's what I got. <laughs> uh, what do you got over there? Well, it's it's ironic that uh, the first thing on my list here is the idea that maybe you want to move your business out of Minnesota. I do. Yeah, and get to, uh, for example, Sioux Falls. It's the state's largest city. They got a population of 290,000, but they have low business costs mixed with a high quality of life. There's no state corporate or personal income tax, no inheritance tax, no limits to what your business can achieve. Number one, best small city for business and careers, according to Forbes magazine. The number two best state for tax climate, that's according to the Tax Foundation. As one of the Midwest's fastest growing cities, Sioux Falls has a robust growing job market. Uh, It's tax friendly. It's friendly. It's uh, short commutes. It's it's a fabulous place, uh, especially for young professionals or you want to expand or change your business. Take a look at Sioux Falls. You can find out all the information you want at SiouxFallsDevelopment.com. That's one word. SiouxFallsDevelopment.com. If you want to have some fun and win some money while watching your favorite teams, you need to join over 5 million players who have won over $2 billion at Underdog Fantasy. Just go to UnderdogFantasy.com or download their easy-to-use app. Use the promo code GarageLogic to get up to $1,000 in bonus cash instantly. You can use locals to win some money like I did with the Vikings' Aaron Jones or a team favorite like Josh Jacobs. You could win up to 1,000 times your money by choosing higher or lower on player stats like touchdowns, home runs, three-pointers, and lots more. You pick who's hot and who's not and turn your sports opinion into real money. Download the app today. Use the code GarageLogic to get up to $1,000 in bonus cash instantly. Every player, every yard they pick up, just select higher or lower on Underdog. Must be 18+, plus, 19+, plus in Alabama and Nebraska, 19+, plus in Colorado for some games, 21+, plus in Massachusetts and Arizona, and present in a state where Underdog Fantasy operates. Terms apply. Void in Colorado. Concerned with your play? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.ncpgambling.org. In Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP and 1-800-639-8783 or text NEXT STEP to 53342. In New York, call the 24-7 Hope Line at 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY at 467-369. What are you talking about? Joe, what are you talking about? Oh, we have some medicine that can help you forget. <laughs> the Earth is not your mother. The Joe Suchere Show. I'm not doing anything till I hear that fanfare. Oh, God. can we hear PK for five seconds? That's fine, but I'm not, you know, fanfare. Let's go. What fanfare? Oh. Can I get some off-air production? Joe. Mm-hmm. And I want you to listen closely because this this concerns you and your life. Mm-hmm. We're going to welcome a brand new partner to the GL podcast oh. right now, Sherman Pole Buildings. You can find them on the web at shermanpolebuildings.com. They're GL's custom pole barn builder for over 40 years, or as their slogan says, quality erections since 1976. Now, here's yeah. the scenario. Hey, now. And I... I know a lot of people can relate to this, and you've probably witnessed this on the, your travels up and down the service road of life. The garage fills up, bicycles, mowers, motorcycles. Now you have a boat. You've got an RV. you got that portable deer stand, that duck decoy. you got on and on and on. Pretty soon there's no room to move in your garage. That's where Sherman Pole Buildings comes along, bails you out, and saves your life with your own toy box pole building. It could be anywhere could be at your home place, your weekend place, Sherman Buildings. They have an option that's just right for you. It could be a traditional pole building with a simple gravel floor, right? No frills, not insulated, no big deal. Or it could be stud and steel with a concrete floor, perfect for rocky soil or Mm. high water tables. If you want insulation, HVAC, whatever, electricity, whatever your needs might be, whatever style, whatever size, 
ShermanPoleBuildings.com has a design that's going to fit your needs perfectly. The only limit is your imagination. You can clear the clutter, get those toys into your own brand new beautiful toy box from Sherman Buildings. Log on to ShermanPoleBuildings.com and get started. Sherman Pole Buildings, quality erections since 1976. Reavers has the shirt on. Nice yep. job, buddy. How are you? I just yeah. wish I had the room to have one. Oh, An erection? man, I've well, seen their well, buildings. They're the best. You know. If I anyone needs one, you need one. You know, you may have mentioned it, Ken, and I apologize if you're offended because um, I was trying to strategically place this shirt. Do, do they have a, a, a span, meaning do they have a, a radius of which they operate? Or is it the uh, all over state? the state, all over the Perfect. Midwest? Perfect. Yeah. They're getting a call yeah, In your case, truly. Joe, I've got it all planned out. Go down to Invergrove Heights, maybe a little south of there. Just buy yourself an acre, throw up your building, and that's where you escape the, uh, the well, the CP. And the game of balls. <gasps> you need a pull. Ken, you're a genius. You need a pull yeah. barn. When I yeah. get in trouble, the uh, the governor lives at East Cliff, uh, mm-hmm. however, yeah. temporarily while we're putting $10 million into a house on Summit that's worth five. Uh, and so temporarily he's been living at East Cliff. He's re- he's, if he's there now, it's very rarely because he's out right. on the campaign trail. And you can tell when he's there because there are several black suburbans there well in the road closed. there is a constant now law enforcement presence there and if let's say you're uh, at, in in the intersection is dayton and otis avenue in st paul mm-hmm. uh, i'm not giving any away it's right there no, no, and El- and and the and east cliff itself is fronts the river river boulevard so if you wanted to get to River Boulevard from Otis, one of the ways you'd do is you'd zip down Dayton and then access Mississippi River Boulevard. Right. But that's blocked now yes. every day. Dayton Avenue is blocked there. And we'll all live because it's not that busy of an access point. But uh, there's always an SUV with somebody in it blocking it now. Would I get in trouble if I uh, stopped and and questioned the person in the SUV and said something to the effect that, why are we spending this money when this phony's not even here? Would I get in trouble? I don't think you'd get in trouble. I, I don't think, even you'd, think you'd, you'd be told, yeah, to move along. Right. Yeah. You'd be politely, yeah. even if you walked up. What God Dayton. knows what this is costing the American taxpayer. Saturday night, a phalanx, a phalanx, I think is the right word, mm-hmm. Of St. Paul cop cars, lights going, came down Marshall and turned into uh, Otis to go to East Cliff. I don't know if he was sneaking home for a couple of hours or what it was, but it, this is incredible, the money we're spending on this. Now, I know that this this is it would be this way no matter who the vice presidential nominee was. I get all that. I understand. I'm sure Vance has the same kind of security around it, but... What the hell do we do? We have royalty in this country. This is this is getting crazy. Now, uh, unfortunately, so is the populace. Uh, you know, you might have somebody <laughs> crawling on a hot tin roof. Well, this, not not only that. Here, just coming back from Chicago, where they, where they were setting up the DNC, where there every public grass area has a fence around it. So you cannot gather and protest. But the number of bicycle cops and the number of uh, SUV Suburbans, black, all blacked out. They're with, all there. With lights on. They're all there. Uh, uh, I, if there were a thousand, uh, uh, you could not count as many because of all the people coming <laughs> I, from DNC. I just think your outrage is a little misplaced, especially since we just, oh. the Secret Service failed miserably in Pennsylvania. I, you know ago. what? My outrage, I bet, is grounded in my distaste for walls. <laughs> I think you're right. Yeah. Before Chris, wait, wait, Chris, okay. let me go first. Are you still able to access eastbound Marshall from Mississippi River Boulevard, or do they have that ramp closed? I haven't. I haven't been down there. I, to my knowledge, yes, you can still access eastbound Marshall from Mississippi River Boulevard. Ken, I'll double okay. check today. I envision right. taking a long drive home today. I'll find out for you. Okay. Leaving here. <laughs> uh, completely apropos of nothing we're talking about, I want to give a shout out to the Minneapolis Star Tribune, now known as the Minnesota 
Star Tribune. Great rebranding, huh? Just great. Well, you can you can have fun with it, but I think it's a ray of hope in a day when newspapers are dying, when a day when newspapers are struggling to be relevant, a day when nobody pays attention to newspapers, they still have enough energy and apparently enough financial backing behind them to cons- to to take this important step. I think it's great. Mm. I think it's great. I don't like what they did to the typeface. I think they replaced a really uh, traditional typeface with something I don't particularly like. Uh, Isn't that the joke? Why the typeface? No, oh. but yeah. but Long face. Uh, I my hats off to them. Uh, there's probably there's probably no newspapers in the country that are announcing an expansion. That's just not happening. I went by two Chicago Tribune buildings. One must have been. That's they... nothing anymore. That paper doesn't That's, even staff yes, Illinois football games. They some nice real estate, though. Are you talking about Where, the one on, right on the river? Are you talking about the big building on the river? Yeah. That's they're not there anymore. That's that's, that's, that's not a, there. That's that Chicago Tribune. I know, yeah. but that's not their building anymore. Uh, this typeface, or as we call it, uh, the font. Yeah, it's the most liberal font I've ever seen in my life. Makes me want to take a shower every time I read something. It's just <laughs> gross. Well, I don't know how you arrive at a, <laughs> the idea that a font, in and of itself, is liberal. I. That didn't That's occur. horrible, Joe. It's yeah. just awful. I think Kenny's playing show you business. must do something about this. <laughs> so? the, uh, but I congratulate him. Uh, I, I, wish, I wish the Pioneer Press had an owner like uh, Glenn Taylor. This is they a, had any balls, they'd no. go with Comic Sans, what the was best your, font ever made. What was your line last week? I don't Every know. office <laughs> the Pioneer Press has. We're is, all remote. Is re- yeah. <laughs> and, and Kenny's line was, it's a pamphlet now, not a newspaper. Yeah. Oh, did we redesign the No, I'm trying to be nice here, and you idiots keep screwing it up. (laughs) Sorry. I just never thought I'd see the day where you're sucking up to the Star Tribune. It's not. I would hardly consider it that. Oh, you've got your nose buried. Are are you aware of the fact that newspapers are in desperate, desperate straits in this country? And here's one one that is stepping forward to say, look what we've just done. Okay, good for you, Star Tribune, and don't listen to the rest of these idiots. I'm still going to find fault with your coverage. Save this paper. No. It's a simple marketing. Ken, you know what this is? Of course it it is, but it's wonderful. It would be like any time someone filled in for Joe and Pat on the radio days. And we'd kiss up to them, thinking that, well, we probably were going to need a job here in you know a couple of That's exactly what what this is. Yeah. He's not listening. I, I, He's you not. know, you're, you're idiots. You're just, you're just idiots. Yeah. Well, we're not I like the paper. So we'll see. Don't call me an idiot. You're you, a couple of liberals. You. Don't call me a you, you. Don't call me a you, you. Call me a you. couple of Walls supporters is what you two are. <laughs> It's so rare, uh, it's just rare so it? rare to have this happen that I just think it's... Now, I, I don't like their logo uh, because it looks too much like the new state flag. Oh, I'm sure exactly. that's just purely a coincidence. Yeah, yeah. I'm surprised you noticed Let's that see. while you Wait, had your who, nose buried so deep. Who runs the strip? Walls' is buddy, Steve oh, Grove. God, you uh-huh. know, that's so weird. Uh-huh. Yeah, really? but they, look at, they... And you love it. But, yeah, uh, sure. I rest my uh, my word stand uh-huh. as the official position of the entire show. How do you In like Minnesota that? Minnesota huh? stand <laughs> tribune. <laughs> now, we had four kids shot last night in yeah. Minneapolis. No, oh, I'm sorry. It must have been, what, early Sunday morning? 1 a.m.? Yeah. Yeah. One of whom was 11. A group of two boys and three girls, and they were all between 11 and 14 years old. They were all in a stolen Kia. All right. Strike one. Two of whom had been arrested two weeks previously for a stolen Strike car. Strike two. And they were fired at with a fully automatic gunfire. Two of the boys and two of the girls were taken to the hospital. One of the girls is reportedly in critical but stable condition after being shot in the head. Okay, uh, what I don't know is uh, the 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 eleven year old was either a boy or a girl. I don't know uh, because of the age. The eleven year old was returned to the parents. 
Oh, I'm not sure Maybe that's going to. I'm not no. I'm not sure that's going to do the 11 year old any good. If the parents were any good at all, the 11 year old wouldn't have been riding around in a stolen car at one in the morning. True, right? But parents might be plural, which who knows? I, I have no idea. You're far too optimistic. Tell me something, True. Such. Why did all the TV stations and the uh, Minnesota Stan Tribune refer to these delinquent <laughs> minors as kids and children when they are, in fact, delinquent minors, criminals, and they give them the lovely title of children? I don't know. Innocent kids. Probably because of their ages. I mean, the, this is an extraordinarily young group. They're delinquent minors. They're guilty. They should be in jail. Uh, one of the kids is the, the one that got shot in the head's a girl. And she's 12. But the other kids suffered non life threatening injuries. Uh, an 11 year old boy, <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. The fifth minor, an 11 year old boy, was detained after police discovered the Kia was stolen. Now, he can't be charged because of his age. So, so he is the one who was returned to his parents. It's a male. Child. That's ridiculous. And it's use, absolutely ridiculous. They're criminals. They should be in jail. And I used this line last week. I'm going to use it again. He's 11. In this state, we're so bass backwards. he's not legally allowed to ride in the front seat. But, He'd be allowed to change his gender. Right. But he can't ride in the front seat because, you know. <laughs> the cars that are being stolen, particularly among juveniles, this is according to Chief O'Hara, are connected to more and more serious crimes. And across the board, that means robberies, assaults, you name it, O'Hara said. It just shows the brazen and callous behavior. They don't care about their own lives, let alone the lives of other people. Now, I'm seeing this in my daily life that these kids, there's, I'm holding out scant hope for some of these kids. I went because I don't get any paper delivery worth paying for, I went out Sunday morning to buy the papers, hmm. particularly because I wanted to see the debut of the new Minnesota Star Tribune. Mine finally arrived at 20 minutes to one, but I went out and got them at 8.30 in the morning. Was and they were, they were breaking in a new kid at the counter oh. at the store, and he was absolutely flummoxed that I was buying newspapers. You know, a teenage kid. Didn't know how to ring her in? He didn't even know no, what no, no. He, <laughs> he said, well, you, you must like papers. I said, yeah. He said, why do you, why do you get a paper? And I, I oh. just, I said, well, I said. <laughs> I wish this was on video. I said, well, look. Uh, Here's the deal, Did bud. the CP call him and prompt him to say <laughs> this? Right. And there's going to be an old guy coming yes. in there. <laughs> Give him the business. <laughs> and I said, well, they're important. He goes, Why? I said, well, you know, business, crime, politics, sports, uh, it keeps you up on the date. Tuna fish recipes. He said, oh, man, that's crazy. I don't do that. I said, where do you get your news on? Uh, <laughs> you get your news on the phone? He went, yeah, I get my news on the right phone. Here, right here. I, I just did. I, I, did you ask him uh, who he's voting for? <laughs> oh, he's just a, uh, honest to God, the whole, th everything's just... <laughs> Well, that, that whole generation does that. I tell you what, at the fair, why don't you ask my kid when he's playing guitar with me where no. he gets his news and if he ever reads a newspaper? They don't even read <sighs> books, Joe. Yeah, I know, Kenny. I know. <laughs> okay, Joe. Okay. I just wasn't made okay. for these okay. times. I wish we could play that. I just wasn't made for these times. It's it's uh, We live in ridiculous times. and Well, the times are so ridiculous. you got 11-year-olds out at 1 in the morning stealing cars. Criminals. Right. Criminals. Young criminals. What about holding the parents accountable? If if there's a parent that knows that their 11-year-old is out at 1 a.m., that is uh, I'm a, problematic. I'm going to go how. out on a limb here. I'm going to go out on a limb. Go. I, I think it's a pretty sturdy limb. Let's go. If your kid is out uh, in a stolen key at 1 in the morning, that's not the first time your kid's been out at 1 in the morning. My wife floated the trial balloon that, well, possibly the parents are working. I said, I, <laughs> I, I might buy that at 10 p.m., but I wouldn't buy that at 1 a.m. On a Sunday morning. Maybe the parents are already in jail. Well, the kid got returned to the parents, so. See you yeah. next Tuesday. That doesn't it's give just me a hope. shame. These kids, uh, these kids need a lot of, and, and no program can change this. 
No amount of money can change this. No uh, Kamala Harris making them less than can change this. By the way, this that's what this festival will be in Chicago this week. It'll be the less than festival. Did you say Kamala Harris? Mm-hmm. Play Joe, it on us. Um, I have a new game we should introduce here in Garage Logic. Yeah. Is Kamala Harris drunk? While she's speaking into the microphone. Try to figure out what the hell she's talking about here. The bus has Wi-Fi and even USB outlets next to every seat. I mean, come on, imagine. You can charge your phone on your way home from work. That's good stuff. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) That's it? Joel, you get to ride the bus. And she's right there, and you can charge your phone. You got to play the other one, Chris. I was waiting just for you to set it up. Ken. Completely babbling about who the hell knows what. I don't know. Listen and to it. And that's what to... our election is about. Our election is about understanding the importance of this beautiful country of ours in terms of what we stand for around the globe as a democracy. Uh We're a republic. As a democracy. Constitutional We know there's a duality to the nature of democracy. On the one hand, incredible strength when it is intact. What it does for its people to protect and defend their rights, their liberty, and their freedom incredibly strong and incredibly fragile yeah. so it's good guys democrats against the republicans you know, I bad guys i only heard it earlier i didn't see the video accompany with it that the soul man sent me the best thing can about that video is the ding ding pennsylvania for harris sign behind her where it looks like you had a bunch <laughs> of crayon? fourth graders that drew up the thing is this the thing you were going to spring on me Friday? No. Oh. no. That's fun stuff. Is that, that ever going to happen? make you angry. No. Oh. Maybe. <laughs> but back to these kids in Minneapolis, there was a group, uh, it, was, it was a bishop, and he was on TV. They were in a circle holding hands. Channel 5? Yeah. I saw it. And I said, okay, we can't, holding hands and talking about this won't solve it, but the bishop said, we need to hold these parents Response, which I shouted out. Thank you. Yeah, I, same thing. I, okay, that's great. Bring the parents. Where are they? Who are they? We want to know. Where are they at? Tell the mayors. Tell your governor. Tell tell everybody. Hide your kids. Hide, hide your kids. wife. Dang baby. Tell that the doesn't governor. make any difference going on TV and making that announcement. It's not helping anybody. It's not. But how do we how do we jump over the line of? We are holding them accountable or calling. Who has to call them out? Members of the black community? Because they're not going to listen to the uh, DFL or, you know, uh, what's his name, Fry, with the new program. That's We got enough programs. Did I, tell you, did, I tell you, did I mention the uh, series I started watching called A Man in Full? Did yes. I mention that on the air? You did. No. Uh, the old Tom the Wolf air. novel, A Man in oh, Full. Yeah. Yeah. And I've read everything Tom Wolfe's written, and I love it. I was it's it's uh, Jeff Daniels plays uh, Charlie Croker. This what? Nothing. This, I love Jeff Daniels. Anyway, it's interesting to note the lives of Black Americans as they are being lived right now in Atlanta, mm-hmm. uh, which is it's a little different than the way Black Americans are leading their lives in the Twin Cities. It's it's very interesting. Uh, the summer months, they're disappearing, aren't they? They are. And you're going to be heading into the... Days are getting short. The autumn and then ultimately mm-hmm. winter. Have your garage door tuned up. Have it checked out by Precision Door. And, man, they serve western Wisconsin in the metro area. They don't charge more for weekends. GLers are thrilled with the service they've received from Precision Door. And that... that not only includes just fixing something that might go wrong with your current <clears throat> garage door, they can provide you a new door. They have models for every buzz, a budget. They send a designer out for free to consult with you. You can figure out what kind of new door you want. But uh, they are a one-stop shopping center for the garage, rollers, springs, the apps, new doors, you name it. 
and uh, they get it done on the first visit usually because they don't give you that song and dance about not having the parts. Oh, they try their best anyway. Right. Sometimes that can happen. But like uh, like other GLers, put this phone number into your contacts for Precision Door, 612-263-6985. Or you can go online uh, to book an appointment or schedule a free on-site new door estimate. You don't have to bring the garage to them. They'll come to your place. That's huge. PrecisionDoorMN.com. It's the end of the world as we know it, and he feels fine. Joe Souchere. How many how many years have we been at the fair as a podcast? This will be year be number five. six. Yep. Number six. Nineteen. I'm a I'm a real loyalist and. I bring that up because it's been six years now that uh, every time I have to stay overnight in the Twin Cities year round, it doesn't matter when I'm there. Uh, if I have to stay a night or two nights or two weeks, I always stay at the courtyard by Marriott, Minneapolis, St. Paul, for, and uh, Roseville. Uh, whenever I'm in the Twin Cities, I always stay there because everything is close by. All the destinations, U of M, State Fairgrounds, the Sports Center up in Blaine, Huntington Bank, XL, Target, Target Field. Uh, oh, and the Roseville Mall, they've got some great restaurants there. I get food delivered there on a nightly basis, a different restaurant every time. I always love that place. Great chairs, brand new renovations. I, I even stayed there while they were renovating. That's how much I love it. High-speed internet, well-lit desks, and I always do the laundry there. I love their little laundry room. Right, and here's a special right now for you GLers. If you're thinking about coming down for the fair or a game or a concert, you can get 20% off a weekend getaway anytime now through the end of March. That's a long stretch. Go to www.wawawagaragelogic.com. Click on the Courtyard by Marriott link, and you can see what I'm talking about. It's a great place. Courtyard by Marriott. Joe, um, do me a favor, please, for both the staff and the listeners. Mm -hmm. I want you, in your cartoon bubble, mm -hmm. to describe Kenny Olson, post-State Fair broadcast, sitting in his room, <laughs> awaiting for the food to be delivered on a Thursday afternoon. The cartoon <laughs> bubble I had was... <laughs> It was Kenny standing in his, his shorts, grunders. He's his, in his grunders, grunders, at the laundry part of the place, <laughs> and people shrieking and fleeing to their cars. <laughs> How did this homeless guy get in here to do his laundry? <laughs> He's washed his socks. Yeah. He's been here all week. <laughs> He's asking, uh, he's asking people for change to oh use in the dryer. Can you quarter, can you spare a quarter, sir? <laughs> As a little known fact, Royce and I are exactly oh. the alike when it comes to laundry. I do laundry every other day. Oh. Sir, I'm obsessed with having always having clean clothes. I'm the same way. I had um, a cheat sheet uh, how to work it. Oh. I can't find the damn thing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Johnny Height. Oh, you, know what I like, Joe? you know what I like about that area? Uh, Pizza Luce. There's oh, about 100%. 10 items. I, I order from them almost every night. 100%. I love that place. That place is yeah. awesome. Uh, this news is brought to you by North American Banking Company. George Latimer, the New York lawyer who moved to St. Paul in the 1960s, went on to rejuvenate and transform the capital city in 13 and a half years as a as its charismatic and visionary mayor has died. He died yesterday. He was 89 years old. Wonderful, uh, wonderful guy. After serving on the St. Paul School Board and as a University of Minnesota Regent, Latimer ran as the DFL candidate for mayor in 1976, promising to revitalize downtown and improve neighborhood housing. He won by a three-point margin. It would never be that close again for Latimer. In five bids for re-election, hugely popular mayor won with upwards of 70% of the vote in a city long known for a conservative bent, was, uh, him with a liberal leaning. No one has served longer as mayor of St. Paul. Those who had a close-up view of his years in office say his biggest accomplishment wasn't the roster of successful projects he championed, from District Energy and Bandana Square to the Heritage Preservation Commission and the Hubert H. Humphrey Job Corps. Instead, 
He's best remembered for infusing St. Paul with his upbeat spirit and pulling the city out of its doldrums in the late 1960s and 70s when it was widely seen as the lethargic mate to its more glamorous twin across the river. And unfortunately, it has sunk right back to the lethargy. Mm. Lethargy. What was the last... Because I know... Didn't you speak to him? I've I've known him for a hundred years. I know, but I when know. was the most recent time you spoke I to him? I visited him at the Episcopalian Homes, but that has to be a couple of years ago. Oh, it was that it yeah. was that long ago. Lost his car once in the dead of winter, but they found it in the spring. They, they got it. <laughs> She's in a snowbank. They, uh, she was covered up pretty good out to soft hotel and. Uh, Sure enough, May rolled around. They went, there it is. There. there it is. That's the old plate number. <laughs> yeah. You couldn't find a guy that would say anything bad about him. He just seemed like a jovial guy. One time I called him and said, because uh, I was noting that uh, Melvin Carter has about 40,000 people on the payroll. That's exactly right. Yeah, and yeah. I said to George, well, how many people do you have, George? He said, don't get me into this. He didn't want to <laughs> yeah. He didn't want to be involved in ripping Carter. But I said, well, just tell me. He said, I had two guys. Two. He had, he had Dick Broker and I uh, can't remember the other guy. He had one guy that would go to the Capitol. He had another He had a guy that hung around the office. He had mm. two People. Two guys. Two. Does Carter have two people? He's got uh, 102. People. He has too many. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> too many. Uh, reiterating a story you talked about, Joe, a shooting around 1 a.m. Sunday left four children injured, one critically. According to Minneapolis Police Chief Ryan O'Hara, officers notified of several shot spotter activations in the 1200 block of West Broadway. While responding, they were also notified of a 911 call saying there was a vehicle with multiple people shot inside on the 1400 block of Plymouth Avenue North. Officers found five people inside the car, four of whom had gunshot wounds. The injured included two boys and two girls, ages, ages 11 to 14. They were brought to Hennepin County Medical Center. O'Hara previously stated that the fifth and uninjured juvenile was arrested after officers found out the car was stolen. But MPD later clarified he was detained on scene and released to his parents about an hour later when officers determined he was 11 years old. Charges can't be considered against uh, some of the juveniles due to state statute limitations. According to state law, as a general rule, kids under the age of 14 are, quote, incapable of committing crime. O'Hara no, said no, that, well, No, they're not. Yeah. They're past well, the age of reason. O'Hara said that while fewer cars are being stolen, the juvenile crime associated with thefts has become more brazen. He added there have been more aggravated assaults, robberies, hit-and-run crashes, and other serious crimes more frequently committed by those involved in the vehicle thefts. When asked how to deter juveniles from stealing vehicles, the chief said he feels there haven't been adequate consequences for the teens who have been arrested. A man was stabbed after two people followed him to his vehicle last night, according to Minneapolis police. Officers responded to a report of a stabbing at the intersection of Franklin Avenue East and Chicago Avenue about 935. There, police found a man suffering stab wounds, brought to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Investigators say the victim was walking to his car when he realized he was being followed. The two people then attacked him and ran off. The man said he realized he'd been stabbed after they left. No arrests have been made. Okay, now wait a minute. Yeah, mm-hmm. stop. Was that a, a, a robbery? Yeah. N- nothing was taken, and there were no other details given, so I guess we have to make So you up can just walk gun. along, and then maybe you'll get stabbed. Mm. Where was this again, John? Franklin uh, and Chicago. Franklin and Chicago. Oh, yeah. Well, that explains it. But, 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 I'm told crime is down. I don't think you should be... Uh, I don't think you should have to worry about getting stabbed just walking to your car. Right. Yeah, you should at Franklin and, and uh, Chicago right. uh, since the 60s. But, but, yeah. but the statistics. No, Chris, 60 and uh, no, they're not talking. They're talking downtown when there's big concerts and thousands but, of people. But, 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 Boy, Metallica sold out that place for I'm a couple so nights. I'm so mad I didn't go. Sounds like it was a raucous my, weekend. My, my brother, father, fun. My brother yeah. fun. took his kids, and I'm so mad I didn't go. That would have been cool. Last night, they played Enter Sandman, but it was the last song on the set list. I would well, have had to shit through the yeah, whole thing. Been there. But would you yeah. have said, okay, is it 1026? I'll be there. No. I'm going to come in. I would have gone in just to hear that. That song, I'm out. There, There's a really good rock and roll band hiding behind all that growling and metal. There's a really good band there. Would you agree, John? 
Uh, I'm not a huge fan, and I think Lars is an awful drummer. I'm God, sorry. Yeah. John, I hate everything about you. Thank you for you. saying that. Yeah. Thank you, John. But I think I there's a rock and roll that. band in there. I think Kirk Hammett's a killer guitar yeah. player, but Lars is... I'm telling you right now. Thank you. When you were a member of the 1995 Faribault Falcons football team, and you heard Master of Puppets, you were ready to run through a brick wall and what's, tackle that Owatonna running back. What's the one? They, is it the University of Virginia? Plays a Metallica yeah, yes. song. Enter Sandman. One of those. Is it, is it Sandman? Is, yeah, when they run down the hill. Yeah. Oh, it's the coolest thing ever. But I love that'll, the airport. Go ahead, John. I was just going to say that'll always be a Mariano Rivera song. So anyway, go ahead. Yeah. Mark. When Shut I left up, the airport John. today, the West <laughs> Jet line was very crowded, and it was the crew from Metallica oh, cool. flying to Edmonton, which is their next West song. Jet? Ooh. Yes, West Jet. Is that, is that private? No, that's Our a business. Uh, business no, class? It's, a, it's a it's a smaller. They go to. Like, at, do they have Tinder. now, Matthew? Do they have seats on those airplanes, or you just stand there and hold <laughs> no, the strap, yeah. strap like a subway? Yeah, yeah. yeah you got. Then you got to stop straps. like in Brainerd that, for gas the main and Duluth or not and the gas. main one. That was the main, oh. and it's How? like it's like being on the roundup. You know that that where you just stand and they kind of they buckle sure. you in while you're standing up there. Yeah. How did yep. you know they were Metallica crew? It was reported to me by a fan of Metallica, I Mr. See. Terry Reed. So, uh, Matthew, um, what do they got, like a 10, 15-gallon gas tank on those things? You Pretty much. stop every 30 you know minutes? What? It takes about 30 people to start pushing that plane down the runway, and then you got to scatter. <laughs> Is that oh, one they of them Mitsubishi jets? <laughs> yeah, Joe, they bump start it. They yeah. give it a little yeah. push. push. Look at the air. <laughs> Somebody gets the crank on in the front, and then they got to, you know, there's a little kickback on that thing, and then they got to get out of there. Minnesota Lieutenant Governor Peggy Flanagan was named yesterday as one of four co-chairs of the 2024 Democratic National Convention, lifting her national profile as she helped steer the four-day gathering and celebration. <sighs> she said, I am proud of the national spotlight on Minnesota and thrilled that this week will showcase the authenticity and joy of the Harris Walls ticket that they have brought to this entire country. Flanagan will gavel the event open and closed every evening and introduce speakers, including President Biden and former President Barack Obama. Serving with her will be Senator Cory Booker of New Jersey, U.S. Rep. Veronica Escobar of Texas, and former New Orleans Mayor Mitch Landro, who also served as Louisiana's Lieutenant Governor and is the national co-chair of the Harris Walls ticket. If the Harris Walls ticket wins in November, Flanagan would become governor of Minnesota. Uh, We'll have lots more on the DC uh, DNC convention when we come back. But first, let's hear from, I believe we're going to hear from Rookie. We are. Talking. And I'm going to talk to you on this Monday afternoon about Minnesota Masonic Charities. Boy, we know that the government can be very inept with some of their programs. Well, when you're a charity and you have a board to answer to and there's people watching you, there's something that we call accountability. Not saying that Minnesota Masonic Charities would do anything poor. However, it's great to have those checks and balances when you are helping people in need and when you're doing it right and you're watching every single penny. That's basically what they do. Is since 2006, several long-standing charities of Minnesota Masonry, they combine to be one umbrella organization. And, man, do they do a great job helping people out. There's, of course, the Masonic Home in Bloomington. That's a great campus. There's scholarships for the youth of America and Minnesota. And, by the way, I think those close in February, so you might want to check out the deadlines for some of those scholarships. Some of them are very, very unique. they got all sorts of great things. they got a podcast. Visit their website, mnmasoniccharities.org. They're on Garage Logic to get the word out. Secrecy, yeah, there's always whispering. Oh, they're a secret handshake, they're secret meetings. They want you to know everything about them so you can enjoy and watch other people. People enjoy the merits of their organization. Please visit this website, mnmasoniccharities.org. Here's a man who spends hours in hardware stores, sifting through the nuts and bolts of life. Joe Souchere. How many windshields in your fleet? got an idea for you. I've actually said this before, but I'll say it again. You can purchase, we can purchase 
a Bugs Be Gone concentrate. You mix it one to one with water and you have the same mixture that you buy in the spray bottles. Every jug of concentrate is enough to fill four spray bottles. So that should help your inventory control issues during this really buggy summer. I've never used Bugs Be Gone as much as I've used it this summer. You can find this stuff in the big box stores, auto parts stores, etc. Or and I love this idea. Log on to BugsBeGoneWorks.com, order up a couple of jugs of it, and just keep using those spray bottles you already have. It works on anything organic. It's safe on all surfaces and anything that has bugs or even organic crud. Not only can you find the Bugs Be Gone, both spray bottles and concentrate in the usual places, NAC hardware stores, frats, auto parts stores, big retailers like Fleet Farm, Order it online, BugsBeGoneWorks.com. Now, that's the letter B in the middle of that website, that uh, website address, BugsBeGoneWorks.com. Johnny Boy? Thank you, Kenny. In other news, national and international, uh, more uh, talk about the Democratic National Convention, which gets underway today. Crowds of activists began gathering in Chicago this morning for protests outside the convention. They say they want to call attention to issues like economic injustice, reproductive rights, and the war in Gaza. Protesters say their plans have not changed since President Joe Biden left the race. Other issues cover climate change, abortion rights, racial equality, to name but a few. A lot of protesters agree that pressing for an immediate so, uh, ceasefire in the Israeli-Hamas war is the top message of the demonstrations. Both police and protesters say there won't be a replay of the Democratic Convention of 1968 in Chicago. Protesters saying they don't want confrontation just to get their points across. Police say they will be allowed to do that if there are no violent disruptions. Latest poll news, Kamala Harris trails Donald Trump in the key swing state of Pennsylvania in two new polls, while a third shows her trailing Trump at the national level. Polls of likely voters in Pennsylvania conducted by Sin Signal and Emerson College both gave Trump a one-point lead in Pennsylvania. Separately, a Napolitan news agency survey gave the former president a one-point advantage in the national election. House Republicans released an impeachment report today filled with accusations of influence peddling and obstruction against President Biden. The 291-page report from three committees accuses Biden of taking part in a conspiracy to help his relatives receive millions of dollars from foreign interests by attending dinners and speaking with them on the telephone. Biden in the past has called his cor uh, the corruption has called the accusations, excuse me, of corruption lies. The investigation has been ongoing without, according to Democrats, any wrongdoing being shown. Biden's allies cited Representative Ken Buck of Colorado, a Republican, a former prosecutor who retired in March, saying fellow Republicans were making impeachment a social media issue as opposed to a constitutional concept. And a group, a group of legal experts called the inquiry a misuse of power and manifestly unjustified. U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken says the time has come now to conclude a Gaza ceasefire agreement that would return hostages held by Hamas and bring relief to Palestinians. Blinken's ninth urgent mission to the Middle East today since the conflict began came days after mediators, including the U.S., expressed renewed optimism that a deal could be near. But Hamas has expressed deep dissatisfaction with the latest proposal, and Israel has said there were areas it was unwilling to compromise on. Within the next hour or so, former U.S. Rep. George Santos is due in court, and apparently uh, he's expected to plead guilty to multiple counts in his federal fraud case. Lock according. him up. Why is he still in the news? <laughs> he's going the to trial. Ugh. The case has been set to go to trial uh, early next month, but the court date scheduled today uh, came very late. This court date was scheduled Friday at the request of both prosecutors and Santos's lawyers. A letter making the request did not specify what it would be about. He has previously pleaded not guilty to a range of alleged financial crimes, including lying to Congress about his wealth, collecting unemployment benefits while actually working, and using campaign contributions to pay for personal expenses. The 36-year-old was once touted as a rising Republican star after he flipped the suburban district that covers the affluent North Shore of Long Island and a slice of the New York City borough of Queens in 2022. 
After that, though, his life story began unraveling. At the time, reports emerged that he had lied about having a career as a top Wall Street uh, law firm guy and a college degree, along with other questions in his biography. Santos had previously maintained his innocence, though he said in an interview in December that a plea deal with prosecutors was, in his words, not off the table. Um, we were just sent a video of uh, I, it doesn't do it doesn't do anything from an audio standpoint. But Walls and Harris are at a convenience store in Chicago. Oh, they're buying Doritos. Did you see Doritos. this? Yeah, already? I did. Yeah. It was like a yeah. three take thing where, oh, no, we didn't get that shot right. You got to get in there because he's got to look like he's a common person. These two are such frauds. Lordy. Apparently, well, she it's, said something about Doritos, and the other side well, doesn't like that. Oh, it's, it's, no, she was eating Doritos, and then the other side went after for eating Doritos. <sighs> and now they're making this too. Try to be funny. So not a serious you know, country, John. It's got nothing. None of this has anything to do with of you know, what's going on in the country. We're not a serious country. Are you sure? Are Bernie, you a Cool Ranch or I'm, Nacho uh, Cheese guy? Uh, and I'm neither. Con okay. I'm convinced that that's what both sides want. That's they're doing this to us on purpose. Can you keep us it? from asking the correct questions? Yeah. Day twenty nine. <laughs> I do like Doritos. If, see, now, if, if you wouldn't have, again, and I harp on this once a month, social media, this would never be a problem because the Republicans never would have started complaining about a picture of her eating Doritos. And then well, it never would have What's he even complain about? This. Why? why? Well, it's it's I, not I an issue. It, well, I don't remember what the problem was. There was. They had some issue with her, you know, they said trying to appeal to whatever, you know, just silly. Yep. The whole thing. The yep. whole thing. Yeah. 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 Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Uh-huh. I've been there, I've been there many times. I think so. I think so. In Vermont, this guy apparently going for some kind of record. A man with nearly 230 law enforcement encounters in the past year is back on Burlington streets again. Good. Burlington <laughs> Burlington police say they arrested 37-year-old Patrick Ibbotson once on Thursday and once on Friday and then twice on Saturday for violating conditions of his release. After police arrested Ibbotson Thursday, they say they identified him on surveillance video burglarizing Burlington City Arts on July 25th. The most recent incident happened around 4 p.m. Saturday when police say they got a call that Ibbotson was banging on the doors of the Cathedral of St. Joseph after already having been removed from the building. At that point, police arrested him. And then a judge released him to appear in court at a later time. Police say Ibbotson has been arrested 69 times and has 35 active criminal court cases pending Sheesh. in Vermont Superior Court. Well, you know, he's he's good at it then. He's he's not settling for mediocrity. <laughs> he he wants to be arrested as frequently as possible. That's and he's succeeding. And he's succeeding. He's, he's doing very well. He has something to be proud of. For some reason, this story triggered something with me about uh, Bloomington police and the Bloomington police chief who made a video. I'm going to say it was two weeks ago now about a kid or a guy on a sport bike that's been purposely on purpose getting into police chases in Bloomington oh. and then losing them oh. and then bragging about it to his friends. And he's even got chalk marks on his bike. Well, they finally caught the guy. And they threw him in jail, and they took his motorcycle away from him. And the police chief, remind me again what his name is. Brian O'Hara. No, no. No, that's Minneapolis. Bloomington. Bloomington. It's, it's like oh, uh, Buck Rogers. No, it's, or, uh, uh, oh, it's that black dude. Yeah. We On law enforcement day, we've got to get this guy on the air at the state fair. Oh, I'd love I want to, to talk to this guy. Hodges. He is the, he, yeah. Hodges, yeah. yeah, he is Booker so Hodges. awesome. Booker. 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 Yeah, let's get him on. Uh, isn't law enforcement day the, the first Monday or Tuesday? Uh, who can like be that? in charge of that no, on no, the staff? Me, because I know a guy that works for him. I'm yeah, doing it right now. yeah, but let's you'll get him yes. on. I'm doing it right now. You know who else I want to get on while we're doing it? Uh, Sergeant Jesse Grabo of the State Patrol. Love to talk to him. Is it okay if I, I love the State Patrol guys, but everyone we've had on is dull. <laughs> well, so when you're I pulling wonder, over Joe, uh, you just I've mentioned. wondered if they're <laughs> if they're not told to be dull. I mean, they come on the show and uh, remember to put your seatbelt yeah. on. And, <laughs> <laughs> 
Because <laughs> I've had question, Joe. Let me do the thumb trick first. Hey, look at this, guys. <laughs> <laughs> you get a Chris can tire, attest to this. Uh, Every time I leave the state fair, there's always a patrol oh uh, trooper God. there, and I'm always like a fanboy. I pull over no, and start talking to him, and they're awesome. I've seen him do it. They're great. It's to the point where the guy doesn't even want to see Kenny come. Right, Kenny and I are walking out of the fair, and I'm doing one of these. Yeah. All right, where's the bus? And Kenny goes, hey, uh, um, so like that scanner you got? What district? Like, no, I ask. First thing I ask cool. is, what, what district? What district? Are you right. sure? Right. Yeah. <laughs> the, one, the one guy last year, Ken, remember we were leaving? Kept like, backing away. He kind of looked at us like, oh Christ. Uh, yeah, you know, he's like kind of readjusting the hat, like giving yeah. us the old. Well, yeah. you know, uh, time for you guys to yeah. head. And Ken just keeps going. And then remember, you pull over that one guy on yeah, 694, yeah. and that was kind of cool. <clears throat> I just. There's so much a part of my life, but you know, it's every day with these guys and yeah, gals. And you get a flat tire, make sure you <laughs> yeah. get off the road. <laughs> yeah. Thanks a lot for yeah. joining us, Trooper. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the you know. Always keep your lights operable. <laughs> they really, really avoid. They really avoid me on Twitter, Such. None try of them will engage uh, with me. Try to have a good set of wipers. Remember, like you had your lights on, but they, like, they weren't the the. It was like a, the down below. It was like super cool. I think those are the way, fog lights. Given the way Joe's acting as a, a trooper, and Kenny the way he acts when he sees one. We should have Kenny interview the trooper when I they come so. on stage. Yeah. That'd be fun. Yeah, I could go uh, fanboy on him. That'd I'm be awesome. glad to talk to you about the rules of the road. Do you remember when you were going down the road? Like, you'd get in the bad guys really fast and oh, you you know, your lights Don't on. remember, don't <laughs> forget the pullover law. Did you arrest okay. him? <laughs> I'm going to start starting tomorrow morning. I'm going to start taking notes on questions I can ask the troopers when you have them on. When you see my lights on, you must pull over if available. <laughs> I'm sounding like uh, yeah. What are you stew. doing? I'm you, sounding you are, like you're doing stew. Stew. <laughs> treasure hunt. It is yeah. as you say, sir. I will cuff you. <laughs> I will not cuff you. Uh, all those guys uh, we are don't in the metro. Carry handcuffs. So. All they are in the metro is babysitters. They, everybody's so afraid of them, and they hate them. All they do is babysit idiots on a, on a daily basis. Your wrists are so big, I'm going to have to zip tie you. And then when they <laughs> do do their job, Mary Moriality will try to arrest you. Yep. <laughs> Joe yep. just said do-do. <laughs> they do do their job. You know, you you have to not come in anymore. No, you you have to be done because you're there's something wrong with you. Yep. You're disturbed. And then like you got the guy and in the cup. You said, dude, you like meant to say that. Why? This thing. isn't funny, but I'm laughing because yes. apparently I'm easily amused. Take a break. No, first let me tell you. Hey, about, hey you, you know what's coming up? How do I get out of here? What? The pup. Let's, oh, the pup. The pup. Let's go. The pup. First thing I'm eating. It's the official food on a stick. Hey, state trooper guy, do you ever have product Hey, pups? shut up with this voice. I like mustard on them. Uh, and they, uh, and they, you know why it's the original? Because it was founded in 1947 by the Carnes family. And right now, Greg and Wayne Carnes, two great GLers, Ooh. still own and operate. There's eight. Prano Pup booths and they're working on the state fairgrounds. Feverishly to polish them all up to get Right them up now to they're speed. getting ready, aren't yes, they? Yes, wiener done in a bun, baby. Yeah, that's it. It's the main, st no, it's the Minnesota State Fair's main and original food on a stick and still the best food value <laughs> at the fair. They bring Prano Pups over to us occasionally, don't they? Yes, they and do. And you like it because it's a dough uh, question with you. A flower. It's a, fl a flower. As opposed to corn. Is versus corn, yes. I, my personal And preference. I happen to agree with you that they taste better than the other ones. Agreed. You know what I'm saying? I know exactly. It's uh, the original food on the stick. Get your Prano Pup. Get your Prano Pup. Right here. At the State Fair. Not a Garage Logic Town Council member. Here's what you're missing. You guys want a review of William's band concert? <laughs> oh, it's even better than that. They played the Celine Dion song. Oh my God. Bang my head. What? Yeah. I see you. Oh my God. What does he play? The triangle? Does he play the triangle? Trumpet. Oh. Look at him right there. 
Thatch Mo. <laughs> That's Chuck Mangione. That's why band teachers are insane. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny, it's funny you say that. I played golf with a guy, and he was a band teacher, and he was nuts. Mm, yeah. And every band teacher I've ever met is crazy. They've been driven crazy. Because they've been having to listen they've been to hearing that. Their <laughs> five years. Go behind the scenes of Garage Logic with unfiltered audio and video access, invites to exclusive events, an emailed newsletter from the mayor himself, and more by signing up at garagelogic.com. It's time to play Love in a Hardware Store. Yes, it is. See, I can't, I can't conclude the day without warning people that if you want to visit London, get going. They could be losing their pub culture. No. And one of the things most associated with Great Britain is the pub culture. Hell yeah. I would give all my fame for a pot of ale and safety. William Shakespeare. There is nothing which has yet been contrived by man by which so much happiness is produced as by a good tavern. Samuel Johnson. A good local pub has much in common with a church, except that a pub is warmer and there's more conversation. William Blake. Well, speaking of that, Joe, drinking is against my religion. I think we should close all the pubs. And that's exactly what's happening in London. Uh, Andrea Widberg did a nice piece here for the American Thinker, and we're learning that, uh, like uh, Minnesota, London is a very Muslim place. Roughly 15% of the population in 2021 identified as Muslim. That's probably higher now. Dr. Peter Hammond has pointed out that by the time the Muslim population is over 10%, it's proselytized, demand halal food in markets and public accommodations. Uh, They've pushed the government to implement Sharia laws, and they've increasingly used violence to force demands to be met. Uh, The demand for accommodation seems to be falling on fertile soil when it comes to the UK's new Labour government, which is headquartered in London. So far, the government has not passed any laws, but it is forcing its employees to change their social habits so that Muslims are more comfortable, and that includes changing Britain's pub culture. Staff of Britain's Home Office, roughly equivalent to the U.S. Department of Homeland Security, have been instructed to make every other social event alcohol-free amid concerns over inclusivity. Sources say senior bureaucrats want to make sure every other social isn't in the pub at a time when Muslims, who are forbidden to drink alcohol, are becoming an increasingly large share of the population, particularly in London and other urban centers. Other departments, including the departure for the Department for Culture, Media, and Sport have similarly been encouraging staff to limit drinking during social events. A uh, Department for Culture, Media, and Sport insider mentioned that during all staff meetings, senior leadership consistently advises against drinking at large social gatherings. And so what we might have here is, uh, well, there's nothing wrong with an employer encouraging employees not to get drunk on the job or a job-related social functions. People don't make good decisions when they're drunk. You hear that, Kamala? It's another thing entirely, though, for a government to force a cultural change to accommodate an influx of migrants who object to their country's ancient habits. I've long said, this is the author, that the U.K. is a dead country walking. These new edicts only reinforce my belief that the England of King Arthur, Chaucer, Queen Elizabeth I, Shakespeare, Dickens, and Churchill will soon be gone, and much sooner, I think, than any of us expect. Wouldn't that be sad? Wouldn't that be sad? Well, so if you're going to Europe, I'd say this about everything in Europe. If you're going to Europe, get going. Get you're, you're going. You're treating this like it's a kicker story to have fun with, but this is a low key coup d'etat. Is I, I what understand this is. exactly what this is. This it's, is part of Islam. 
If the Muslims can't drink, nobody can drink. It's not enough for them to just stay out. And and they're doing this all over the country, and it's leading to their eventual takeover of yep. their, these countries, including this one. Yep. That's what's happening. Sharia law. Well, in fact, it, it, in this piece, we learn this. Recall the Minnesota taxi drivers in 2007 who refused to drive people carrying closed bottles of alcohol. Back then, the city cracked down on those drivers. I'm pretty sure that if the Muslims in Minnesota were to try the same tactic today, they'd be met with more accommodation. Of course they would. I bet they would, too. Of course they would. It's not enough to uh, live and let live. You, they, everybody has to bow to their religion. And it, it'll take a while, but they'll be running the joint. Um, apropos of nothing, but the DNC just had a meeting in which Tim Walls was just introduced as Command Sergeant Major at a DNC meeting in Chicago. They're freaking doubling down on his stolen I thought he did not achieve that rank. He did not. But we're going well, with What it are anyway. they doing? Joe, we're being, as Kenny and I have mentioned, we're being gaslit to death. It doesn't matter what's the truth. John, just for the hell of it, please verify yeah. that. Did Walls reach command sergeant major status? He did stand? not. He, was, he had to take a test or something, right? Yep. He, he decided not to take it, right? Well, then they're some... introducing him uh, inaccurately. Are you accusing him of stolen valor? I don't know. I'm, ac I'm accusing the people who introduced him as being idiots. They're gaslighting. No, they know what they're doing. Yep. Exactly the, this right. isn't Hanlon's razor. They know what this they're doing. This is deliberate. Yep. It doesn't matter what the truth is. We just need you to believe what we want you to believe. The original gaslighting was a film, is that correct? Or the, the, and yeah, where the guy the went around the house and lit gas lights uh, to slowly crazy. poison yeah. the woman or it's something? Slowly. He tried to make her think she was crazy. Right. Yeah, driving her crazy. Because yeah. yeah. they'd be off and on and off and on. And that's right. That's right. Off and et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. It's the thermostat game that we all play with our I do play this game. I'm going to yeah. burn that house yeah. down if she turns it down below. Yeah. John, you finding anything? Or are we, or are we, we're pretty sure that he's not a command sergeant he, major. He's not. He's yeah, not. I, I, I've read that in the past, that he is, he is not. But that doesn't matter, Joe. How all, you know what else is funny? The fact that we have the entire perimeter secured with a fence, and you have to have an ID to enter to the convention. Isn't that hilarious? No. Really? You that's don't see pretty, the symbolism? I would say that's standard procedure. But the, 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 the Democrats are the ones that don't require you or are pushing against you having an ID oh, to vote. Oh, I see And also see don't you. like the fencing as with a... Okay. Do you need new windows? Boy, do I. I want ones that people can't see through into my house. I spent a lot of time <laughs> yesterday cleaning windows, which would be a great Van Morrison lyric, wouldn't it? Big Sunday at your house? Yeah. I think he did it, yeah. yeah. Mark Knopfler on lead guitar on that one, by was the way. Was that really? Oh, Mark, yeah. yeah. Cleaning windows. Yeah, Knopfler played the guitar. Bakery yeah. across the street. Uh, Renewal by Anderson has you covered. Right now, save some money. They got a great state fair sale going through September 2nd. Buy one, get 40% off the next one when you buy four or more windows. No money down, no monthly payments, no interest for 12 months. The offer is good on renewals of claim window replacements. You listen to this show, your whole house will be redone. Anderson Engineering and Innovation is present in every component, providing acclaimed windows with their beauty, their durability, and their performance. They work and if you need new doors, the state's fair sale pricing is good on the new ensemble entry doors. They are exclusively from Renewal by Anderson. They seal the weather tight every time. Take advantage of this pricing. It's good through September 2nd. Windows, patio doors, entry doors, Renewal by Anderson has the best products and the best service. Learn more at RenewalByAnderson.com backslash Garage Logic. Or call Renewal by Anderson at 651-705-6931. And it is Renewal by Anderson who brings you since only because. That's right. Only because since when? Only because they come from the traveling Lymans in Eden Prairie. It was on this day. Holy cow, it's August 19th. Well, it was on this day. Yes, sir. In 1862. During the U.S.-Dakota War, the Dakota made their first attack on New Ulm. 
and Governor Alexander Ramsey appointed Henry H. Sibley general of the Minnesota Volunteers. Walls was the command sergeant general. Back then. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Although Sibley had no military experience, Ramsey chose him because the settler colonists trusted him. At the same time, he had a long history with the Dakota and their leaders through his role in the fur trade. You know what was on this day, Chris? 819? On this day in 1863, Count Ferdinand von Zeppelin, inventor of the airships that would be used to bomb London in World War I, enjoyed a more conventional balloon ascension in St. Paul. Huh. On this day what, what in St. Paul. Was, was that a fair, a world fair? No, it couldn't have been. That was 1863, still pretty primitive yeah. times. Yeah. We had old Count Ferdinand von Zeppelin in town. He went up in a balloon. <clears throat> that was the inspiration. Um, it's well-known knowledge that that day was the inspiration for the Zeppelins. Yeah. Ramala. On this day, August 19th. August 19th, the summer of August 19th, on this day in 1957. Speaking of balloons, this is one of my favorite this days in history. The Air Force launched the ultra high level balloon Man High 2 in Crosby. Pilot David Simmons reached a record 101,516 feet, almost 21 miles above Earth, before settling down in Elm Lake, South Dakota. The flight took 32 hours and 10 minutes, but Simmons occupied the balloon's capsule from pre-launch to landing for 44 hours, a period longer than Charles Lindbergh's solo flight across the Atlantic. Wait a minute. Crosby, Minnesota? Yes. And he came down in South Dakota? Yes. He didn't go around the globe, though. No, he just <laughs> went up. For a long time, he went up. And, and away he went. I'm not buying that. No, not, that's it's a not very true. Very famous story. 1957. Nah. Can you imagine? No, no, no. <laughs> it, it was uh, it it was uh, in Crosby. I can't imagine. You know, Crosby would have been the the very small town, and this had to create quite a hullabaloo. Well, I Ken, bet. that's not that hullabaloo. Crosby's up by Brainerd, right? Yeah, yeah, but how do you not get caught up in the jet stream and end no, up somewhere over yeah. Russia? They didn't have jets that many Fact jets. News. And, uh, Fake not, news. Not, not that many jets were even flying in 1957. Really easy to dupe the public back in those days. That's true. Imagine uh, Joel, the gaslighting we get away with back I thought then. I had a funny line there. It just everybody just walked right over it. Oh, yeah, I didn't even I hear it. It wasn't guess. that great. Well, that was pretty good. Yeah, John. I was just going to tell you before people correct us, I'll tell you exactly the Walls thing, okay? Yeah. He was promoted to command sergeant major, but his rank was reduced to master sergeant a day before he retired because he not, had not completed the requirements to remain a command sergeant major. I don't know what those requirements are. I tried to look it up, but I, I could not find anything. So he is officially a retired master sergeant, not a retired command sergeant major. Well, is he technically... Uh off the hook in being called a command sergeant major? No, I, I don't think no, I, so. I don't think you should call him a command sergeant major. No. He should be a master sergeant, right? That's, That's what right. I would think. Okay, master Mr. Walls. I, I'm convinced in my feelings that whatever they're saying to me is a lie. Yeah. yeah he's crazy. Yep. Well, he's... Thank you. He's um, yes, sir. Joe, two days, 17 hours, 10 <laughs> Minutes. I'm looking forward to the state fair. Always do. GL has a special niche I'm, at the I'm state fair. I'm extremely excited this year because of the music. Yeah, days. The great I get to music, play music this year. One day with Jeff Dayton and then one day with Pat Donnie. Yeah, and Steven wow, C. That's be that is blast. cool. How do you spell music? It's got a K or two C's. Thank you, GLers. <laughs> do us a favor. Uh, I can tell you right now, today is going to be an extra special day on the Garage Logic YouTube channel because on that channel, yes, indeed, we are posting daily content for your amusement. You can also follow us along on all of our social media channels, which includes Facebook, Twitter, I refuse to call it X, and Instagram. Uh, what else am I forgetting? Oh, yes. The 
Daily Logician. It comes right to your inbox. It's an email that includes the most recent, up-to-date episode of the Garage Logic podcast, including a weekly note directly from the mayor himself. But yes, please do us a favor and subscribe to the Garage Logic YouTube channel.